G'day guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Wildcard. The European Champions Cup, or you might call it the Corporate Heineken Champions Cup, was played. The finals was played on the weekend. Leinster Rugby versus La Rochelle. Uh, the old rivals, the Ronan O'Gara, betraying his country as the head coach for La Rochelle has been a bit of a banana peel for Leinster over the years and uh, yeah, they've done it again. They made history today, uh, well not today, a couple of days ago, beating Leinster, the heavy, heavy favourites going into this game and yeah, beating Leinster in a match that I actually could not believe how they put out that win Dying like one minute left, a minute and a half left on the clock, scoring a try after repeatedly pounding the Leinster try line for about like 15 minutes, and finally squeezed out the win, 24 points to 21. This was one of those games you're just wondering: has Leinster left too much unquestioned opportunities to penalty kicks? It's one of those things that, yeah, seven penalty kicks from Leinster rugby. Not a single, uh, not a single try. So many of those penalties were kicked right in front in prime position, and they just opted to happy to walk away with the three. You know, there's a saying in Australia: if you want to be the All Blacks, you have to score tries. You can't just kick penalty goals. And that there's, you know, it sounds kind of stupid, right? If you think about it, Ooh, plenty of games has been won with a penalty kick. But the whole point of the the saying in Australia is that. When you do a penalty kick, you are foregoing an opportunity to apply pressure. You're foregoing an opportunity to get seven points. It takes more than two penalty goals to equal to one try. So you are giving up a lot of opportunities. Two penalty kicks is a lot of opportunities in a game to just walk up with six points. And if you score one try out of the two penalties, you will be ahead. You know, consider if you converted it. Uh, you will be ahead by one point. So a lot of these opportunities, yeah, you just can't throw them away with the penalties. You need to test the, the opposition. You need to test the defense. You need to put the opposition under pressure. You might get yellow cards. There's so much you can get out of applying pressure to a team that just three points is worth so much more than three points. There's something that the All Blacks used to do when they were under pressure. I don't think they do that as much anymore in recent times. But there used to be a time where the All Blacks are happy to give you three points. If if that means they can get out of trouble from their own 22, they're more than happy to... You can see like Richie McCaw back in the days just cynically rolling himself on top of the ball so he doesn't come out of the rock, happy to give, give you a penalty, happy to give you three. Because it means that this stops the pressure, it stops the opportunity for a try. Losing three points is nothing compared to losing to seven. And yeah, and immediately stops the pressure. So instead of suffering for five minutes, ten minutes, and concede a try, they just take the penalty three minutes under uh, three minutes into their own half. You know, only being under pressure for three minutes, they give away you three points, and they can get themselves back on the front foot in attacking again. So this game, Leinster Rugby, despite having more opportunities attacks, looked more threatening when they were attacking. In fact, they are. Just so, so, so happy to take the three. And I think that decision can come back and bite them. So if you have to look at something... So for some reason, this game has no stats. So I don't know why nobody bothered to collect stats. But going into this game, Leinster averaged 6.7 tries in the competition. Whereas La Rochelle, on, uh, La Rochelle, La Rochelle only averaged 3.4. And they scored three tries in this match. And Leinster didn't even try to score one. Yeah. So, Leinster being the heavy favorites to win this game, I thought they really, really managed again poorly. Poorly. So, it was, so despite the fact that they looked really good with the hands on the ball, they were just not really happy to take the three, not really wanting to put any pre prolonged pressure on La Rochelle. And in the end, La Rochelle, despite looking a lot worse, was put into the corner. They had to score tries, and they forced themselves through three times to snatch the wing in the dying minutes of the game. So, and there was this game was actually really 
like even throughout the game, everything had, was going for the favor of Leinster. So I really don't, yeah, it's, it was really bizarre, right? So there was one point in the game in the second half, 63rd minute, La Rochelle play had a brain fart, decided to trip one of the, uh, what's his name? He decided to trip um, uh, the, 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 the Irish number nine, uh, what's his name? God, uh, the, 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 the New Zealand guy. God, his name. Gibson Parks. He decided to trip Gibson Parks when he was chasing a ball down. Really obvious yellow card there. So he gets sent off for 10 minutes. Despite a play in the bin, Leinster still took that opportunity to take three points. They could have... And this was a lock, I think it was, that did a trip. Yeah, number four. The lock that did the trip. They should have easily gone for a set piece for a liner and tried for a more. Because with the lock missing, you go for the more. Have that, you know, the Leinster have the talents. Have some of the best forwards in the world. They could have easily got a try there. But no, they went for the three points. I was surprised. I was like, what? Come on, man. That was not the right decision there. And they took the three there. And sure enough, uh, La Rochelle, despite having a play in the bin, was putting pressure on Leinster. Just like trying to go for tries. In fact, Leinster was giving away penalties to try to bait, in fact, La Rochelle to take the three. La Rochelle just went, no, nah, we're going to go for the try. They opted for scrum for a penalty instead of going for the line out, it, despite missing a lock. So, and they were still dominant in the scrummaging. So the set piece from La Rochelle was much better than Leinster. Uh, and also the line out as well. La Rochelle scored a more line out. Leinster, yeah, was, had nothing to defend that. It was... Really, really surprising to me that these basic stuff like scrummaging against a, a team that's missing a lock and line out, just basic more defense. Leinster were just not there. It was almost like they didn't expect it or something. Uh, and also the kicking game. La Rochelle actually the only aspect of the game La Rochelle won and only late in the second half was the kicking game. La Rochelle really managed to ping Leinster in their half. And there were so many mistakes by Hugo Keenan, uh, even mistakes by Johnny Sexton. The return kicks were poor. Uh, they were like, you know, knocking their own ball in, in their own goal, that sort of things. Uh, like just not really able to return the kick from the kicking pressure that was applied by La Rochelle. As a result, the last 20 minutes of the game, despite La Rochelle having a play in the bin, was mostly played inside Leinster's half. And the in the end, La Rochelle was pounding the Leinster's try line for about must be 10 minutes or something and they were just not taking the three you figure the 10 minutes left you take the three you still have an opportunity to keep the goal no these guys know with ball in hand with pressure applied with a play even with a play in the bin Leinster cannot score and they are the only ones in control so they control the game for 10 minutes like this was like watching uh, honest to god this was like watching one of those high intensity interval trainings for the four pack it was just 10 minutes of pick and go pick and go pick and go uh like you know you know crash ball pick and go the backs didn't even do anything for the last 10 minutes i think the, the outside center had like one run right and just pick and go and i swear to god will skeleton must have lost like five kilos by the end of it this the amount of time that these these forwards have just crashed the ball was insane eventually the i think it was the halfback who, who what was it um gets the ball he sees finally see a gap pick and go right again he sees the ball picks up the ball he runs he gets tackled short and he reaches out gets the ball on the line and yeah and that was it and a lot of people were confused at this as well so the clock had a minute and 10 seconds left when the trial was scored so a lot of people thought there was still a kickoff time for a kickoff but the law actually says you have 90 seconds to kick a conversion after following a try not 60 90 i had to check this as well i'm like really i thought it was 60 seconds to to make the uh the, to make the conversion but no it's actually 90 seconds 60 seconds is only for penalty kicks so penalty kicks you get 60 seconds but conversions you actually get 90 seconds i had to check the law from uh from from real rugby to, to double check this but it was true so la rochelle gets the try they were already winning by one point wait for the clock to run out kicks the two points anyway 21 24 huge upset and this was a huge i think strategic mistake by leinster if you come to uh to new zealand and play like that 
you're going to walk home 3-0. There's no doubt about it. You cannot play. You cannot throw away seven opportunities to score tries. Just walk away with three points. Three penalties, and a lot of these penalties were like right in front, inside the 22. It's not like one of those long ones, you know, 45, 50 meters out. It's right inside the opposition 22. Prime spot to score tries. They just pops the three and happy to walk away with three. So let's have a look. So I just want to quickly talk about the three tries. I guess the only highlight you could talk about in this game is the Lord Rochelle's three try. The first try was absolutely spectacular. Uh, Lord Rochelle was just, again, very in daring inside the lens of the half. They were already like, uh, they were already, I think, what was it? Three penalties behind, or two penalties, three penalties behind, I think. Nine points to seven at this point. Nine minutes, I think three penalties or two penalties behind. They're, they were behind. Um, and then they're just like happy to run the ball inside the lens. It's half. They got a full on penalty advantage. They spread the ball out wide. And the number 14, the blindside winger, draws the last two defender. And the, the, the open side winger, the number 11, he must have had like half a foot to work with on the sideline. He gets the offload, runs through this tiny little gap on the sideline, right? And then there was a fullback coming up to cover him. I'm like, surely. He's just going to get covered or get pushed out. He just did this massive step in field and just absolutely destroyed the fullback. I think it might have been fullback or somebody. But whoever was covering that was just got absolutely smoked on the inside. He just stepped him on the inside and run straight through for a try. It was insane. This is, The athleticism of this guy was insane. I don't even know his actual name. Let's see if we can get his name up. Like, honestly, I don't watch... Uh, European club rugby very much, so I don't actually know everyone's names, but let's just quickly get the names up. If we can get, like, this is just a bit too messy. I just want to see the report. Match events. Let's just go with that. Yeah, this is good. Um, who was it? Um, Borg. Bogariti, Bogarit, man, this guy was, no, that's not right, no, this guy, uh, Rule, man, this guy was insane, he was so athletic, it's a shame that in the last 10 minutes, La Rochelle didn't spread the ball to the, any of their wingers, but I was, I was for sure, if they had spread the ball out wide, uh, the talent that they had on the wing would have gone in without pounding the trial line for 10 minutes, but anyway, so, and then on the, uh, the, the first half, um, Leinster was leading. Second half, again, Leinster have to chip it with the penalties. 59th minutes in the second half, La Rochelle gets an opportunity for a 5-meter line-out. They set this line-out for a beautiful more. The more completely destroyed the Leinster defense. It was like there was a full-on penalty. So Leinster players were trying to wrap up the ball carrier illegally from offside position, but still couldn't stop it. It goes through for a nice try. Um, for a nice try. And this is uh, Bogarit goes in for the for the second try for La Rochelle. And on the 63rd minute, like I said, La Rochelle is like one of the players had a brain fart. Their number four, I think it was, trips um, Gibson Parks and then gets a yellow carded. And then in the last 10 minutes, just epic fitness for the forwards. Keep pounding the trial ends again and again. There were so many penalties given away by Leinster, I was really surprised Wayne Barnes didn't issue a yellow card or even a warning. I, I thought for sure they were going to give a yellow card away. Like the amount of offside penalties was just like staggering. But no, no yellow cards. And with just less over, less than just 10 sec, 70 seconds left on the clock. <sighs> Ritier? I don't know this guy, man. Goes in for the try. He gets tackled short. Slams it, sticks his hand out, puts it on the line, and that was it. One point ahead, uh, 22 21 with a kick to come. And the commentators were saying, There's a kickoff, and then Wayne Barnes goes, No, you have 90 seconds to the kick. I had to double check the rules. Yes, he does have 90 seconds. He waited for the clock to run down, kicks the goal. History being made, yeah. So, you can't win a rugby match. Kicking three points. Way too many opportunities lost. Uh, and also, yeah, like I mentioned, 
The kicking game really seemed to be a struggle for the Irish team. If they come to New Zealand, really like those high ball kicking game uh, up against Bowden Barrett, you really have to polish that up. Like Hugo Keenan was struggling once again under the high ball. You have to basically stick to your to your um, I don't know, strengths with an attacking rugby. Leinster just did not, yeah, did not press their own advantage. They literally didn't play the game that they are best at, which is fast-flowing, quick breakdown, attack rugby, and they played a game that, yeah, poorly managed. 21 points of penalty kicks, only to lose by three tries to a penalty. So, yeah, way too many opportunities squandered. Let me know your thoughts on this game, guys. I really do appreciate you watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. And, uh, yeah, stick around. We'll have I will have reviews for... The, obviously the All Black series with Ireland and uh, all the international matches, in fact. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, see you guys next time. Cheers.